Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. And today, I would like to do an unboxing of East 10 Nordics, which I bought the PS5 version. This game released a couple weeks ago, uh, middle of October. Here we are in November already. I mean, the months just fly by, and looking forward to playing this game eventually. Over the past six months or so, I've been playing through the entire East series. You can check out the East videos playlist on my channel. And I just recently finished playing through East 8, Lacrimoso of Donna. Taking a bit of a break before diving into the next one, East 9, Monstrum Nox, but eventually we'll play that. And then soon enough, we'll be playing East 10 Nordics. So, you know, Nice America always does a great job with the limited edition boxes. I showed off a number of the Trails limited editions on the channel from months ago. I think I showed the Trails into Reverie one, the Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4. It's not Nice America, but I got them on eBay. I got the Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 from Exceed Games. So they always do a great job. In this case, they sent this. This is part of the limited edition. A bag. <laughs> the East 10 Nordics Sling Bag. I'm not going to open it. It's just like a, a book bag. A gym bag or something. So you get the idea. It's, it's cool. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. But, you know, it's something extra to, to throw in there. So... Let's take a look at the artwork right here. We have Adol Kristen, the legend himself, as well as Karja, his, uh, is she the love interest here? No, she doesn't have blue hair, but she's definitely waifu material in my eyes because she's got blonde hair. And voiced by my favorite female voice actor, Shirami Lei, who voices Lucy in Fairy Tale and Asuna in Sword Art Online, among many other characters. I love her. So it's great to hear her in an East game, that's for sure. Which I think, didn't she voice Olga in East 8, Lacrimoso of Dada? I think she voiced Olga. But yeah, let's let's open it, see what we got here. Gotta get the plastic off. It's always a struggle. You know, I cut my fingernails really short, so I always struggle with these things. But, you know, we got it open, no problem. And toss that aside. Let's see. It's like, look how perfectly folded that is. And got the game, CD, art book, the whole nine yards. Let's start from the top. Let me actually put this to the side and I'll pull out each thing one by one. That's the CD. So I'll do that. Oh no, that's something else. What even is this? The metal pin. Is that all that's here? How do I get it out? Yeah, okay, the metal pin. That's in there good though. I don't want to like rip it out and, and ruin the cardboard. Cause some of these things I just like to have for collector's sake, like the CD I'll use, but this thing, what am I going to use a metal pin for? So we got the metal pin. We got, here we go. The book of horror. What on earth is this? Is this his journal or is this, okay. Is this the art book? I think this is the art book. It is. I'm going to save the art book for the end. Let me just show you all the stuff first, and then we'll go through that in great detail. Uh, th these look like some art prints. Let me open them off to the side. Oh, they're postcards on the back here. You can see you can mail them to your friends. <laughs> I wonder if people do that. It'd be kind of cute as like a Christmas card, especially for your, your gamer friends. So I don't know who any of these characters. Oh, there's Adel and Karja. Where's Dogi? Where's Dogi? The the wall crusher himself. There's the whale. Okay. Is Adol getting shipwrecked? I understand Adol is like a pirate in this game. Oh God, look how sexy she is. My goodness, Karja. Is she like a Viking or something? Or is she a pirate too? My goodness. I saw, dude, they have the free DLC. I've already seen this from, from the threads on 4chan. It's called the Karja Raven Armor. And oh my God, she's like running around half naked. I usually just use the default outfits, but I might have to put Karja in that outfit. I'm just saying. So it looks like the, there's Dogi. There's the open field. There's Adol and Karja. That's the back of the box. We saw that. And Adol and Karja again. You know, I'm not really a big fan of Adol's hair in this game. It looks just like, come on. He always keeps it nice and combed and, and groomed and everything. And here it is blown in the wind. But maybe there's a reason for that. I think as far as the timeline goes, this is relatively early in the timeline. I know for a fact E6 and 7 is the end, at least of the games that have been released, and Origins the beginning, and then 1 and 2 is early on. 
but this game is near the beginning. And then 8 has to take place after Memories of Salsetta because of certain characters. But that's all I'll say about that for now. So let's see what's next. The soundtrack, okay. Only eight songs to be free. Those who live in the distant sea, heat hazard, violent warriors, hard hearted rock line, yesterday's journey, tomorrow's dream, young swordsman in the eyes, and so much for today. All right, I'm not gonna open that. You get the idea, it's a CD. The game, the deluxe edition, which I think there's a mini art book in here. Two heroes, one thrilling adventure. Experience the perils of the Obelia Gulf through the eyes of Adol Kristen and his unexpected ally, the pirate Karja Balta. Let me um, pause and open this off screen and then I'll show you the goodies inside there. Okay, back over here and there's the, you guys want to redeem the soundtrack? Go go for it. Cause I already have the CD. There's the code if you want. I guess, is that the same? Yeah, it's the same thing. They're kind of stingy. I remember I bought the uh, Rhapsody and the Legend of Nayutel limited editions from Nice America. And there was like four discs with the Rhapsody one and two discs of Nayutel, the whole soundtrack. Here we only get eight songs. Like what the hell is that, Falcom? But yeah, the, the music's great. You, you guys already know. Falcom is awesome. Especially, what the hell is that? That's the whale. The, the music is always great. I don't even know which, which one would you say is better. Is East better or is, is uh, Trails have better music? I know it's all the same composers, but East has more of a rockin', uh, a rockin' thing to it. So let's read this. This is from Adol himself. At the moment of birth. No, that's not really Adol's voice. At the moment of birth, each of us is as free as a bird with not a single restraint tying us down. That almost sounds like Artorius's quote to Velvet in Tales of Berseria. Why do birds fly, Velvet? But with age come the varied shackles that bind, clipping away at our wings, feather by feather. In time, we long for a return to the freedom we once knew. But the truth is, we can return to those days whenever we choose. Adol Kristen, an excerpt from Norman's Paradise Lost. Oh my god, Adol. So, there's Adol Kristen. Again, I don't like his hair in this game. I really do. Let's see. An extraordinary adventure with fiery red hair and eyes burning of curiosity. He posthumously left behind over a hundred journals detailing his adventures. It is said that at age 17, he departed Asteria, the site of his first adventure to journey to Salceda. However, the Norman's Paradise Lost, one of the volumes found in his birth home, reveals that he made a stop in Obelia Gulf with his companion, the ex thief Dogi, along the way. So this is early, this is after East 1 and 2, before Salceda. And that's what I mentioned in my review of East Memories of Salceda, is the fact that, yeah, the narrator was someone who found his journal after Adol died and was recounting his adventures because, you know, none live who tell the tale of Adol Kristen, the legend himself. I love it. There's uh, Karja, which oh, she's so fucking sexy, man. I can't wait to learn more about her. But we have Karja Balta, the only daughter of the Balta Sea Force's Jarl, Grimson. She unabashedly leads a crew of marauders to carry out the Sea Force's pyrotactical activities. The sight of such acts strikes fear into the residents of Karnak, who refer to her as the Pirate Princess. While she may look refined at a glance, she fights as ruthlessly and brutally as any Norman, axe and shield in hand. Oh man. So there's the Gulf, there's Karnak, the harbor town. So this kind of already reminds me of Lacrimosa of Donna. It looks like, you know, I was worried when I first started that game that it was all gonna be just a beach and, and islands and stuff like that. But as you explore more of East 8 Sabrin Island, you learn that there's forests, there's mountains, there's caves, all sorts of stuff. So I'm not even worried about this. There's, we already saw there's like a volcano in the distance of one of the, the art prints. So the Sea Force, ships and whatnot, the Sandras, Mana, some more illustrations. We already saw those were the postcards. So let's take a look at the art book then. Lots of good stuff here. I'll move out there so you can have the background. But uh, 
How many pages? Not even a lot of pages. I thought there'd be more. The, the Trails in the Reverie book had, had more pages. It was like over 100, 200 pages, I think. So it's the same thing. Adult Kristen, Karja, we're gonna get Dogie. Dogie, look at him! A brawny, big-hearted thief whom Adol met in Asteria, adept at hand-to-hand -hand combat. His mighty fists are powerful enough to break through rock walls. They don't call him the Wall Crusher for nothing. Following the conclusion of his grand adventure around the ancient kingdom of Ys, he leaves his thieving ways behind. Dogie shares an odd affinity with Adol, whose <laughs> thirst for adventure is never satisfied and always looks out for him on their journeys together. So we have Gren Burge, a young man who is a member of Karnak's local militia. Though his constant overabundance of positivity and passion tends to get him nowhere, he often makes unwitting profound statements that earn the respect of his peers. He is the only son of Mayor Clement, but hates when people bring up that fact. We have, uh, let's see. We have Rosalind Ruse Berry, the poster girl of the Ruseberry Inn and daughter of its owners, affectionately known as Rosa. She's a kind soul who is popular among patrons of the inn's tavern, with many calling her more put together than even her parents. She can also be rather sharp tongued at times, which may be part of the reason she gets along with the boys her age in town. Oh boy, the boys are taking advantage of Rosa there. But uh, we have Cruz Carpent, the son of Rome's Carpent and successor to Carpent Trading, a thriving company in Karnak. He is childhood friends with Gren and Rosalind, but has been growing apart from them lately due to his work with the family business, an avid reader. Cruz is the fountain of knowledge on various topics. Though meek at first glance, he is surprisingly proactive, having once attempted to stow away on a Roman imperial merchant ship as a child. We have Ruff, Evelise, a young man who is childhood friends with Gren, Cruz, and the other kids of Karnak, but left town to earn a living. While he jokes around and pokes fun like a typical teenager with Gren and Rosalind, he can be surprisingly mature for his age at times. He avoids contact of his family and makes an effort to stay away from home. Here's Mirabel Azrad, the nurse who works at her father's clinic in Karnak. While cheerful and friendly, she has surprisingly steely nerves, remaining unshaken even in front of the infamous pirate princess. Gren and the other youths of Karnak are careful not to defy her as she has taken care of them since they were li little. Nevertheless, she is a supportive figure watching over them as they grow into themselves. Okay. Philea? How do you even say her name? A warrioress who leads the Balta Sea Force's third flotilla and makes up half the peerless pair among War Chief Gunner. She plays an active role in the Sea Force as one of Jarl Grimson's right hands. It seems she was not born as a Norman, but due to personal circumstances, came to join the Balta Sea Force of her own volition. Urzer, a chamberlain of Karja's household, the Balta family. Despite his age, he is well-mannered, attentive, and always puts Miss Karja first. Like Lady, I'll just call her Phil, he is not originally a Norman and apparently hails from another country entirely. Large cast of characters here. Who's this? the nameless old man? Oh, look at him. A man of large stature who lives by himself in a small hut on a certain island tending to his fields. He seems to have lost all his memories, including where he came from. Why is on this island or even his own name? Uh, I'm going to press X to doubt all of that. There's Leela. And we have some more stuff, the setting. I'm not going to go through all that, but you get the idea. We went through the characters, the monsters. These look like the enemies. Or Colborn, the, the Griger. Jora Dorsen. How do you, how the fuck do you even say that? L-Q-G-R. Like what? What kind of name is that? <laughs> oh man, so okay, we got the, the enemies and all sorts of fun stuff there. We got some cute chibis. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she is Karja. What a she looks cuter with her helmet on, honestly. There's the Pickard. The man that's uh the East version of Mishi. Although Mishi has a cameo in some of the East games, that's for sure. 
Some more of the beautiful. Is that Dorm Tower? Yeah, that's Dorm Tower. Wait a minute. Who who is that with Adel? Is that Luta? That's gotta be Luta then if that's Dorm Tower. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, dude, did I mention how sexy Karja is? Sheesh! Oh, look at her smile. Look at her precious smile there. So I'm pretty sure, from what I've seen with trailers and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure she starts out as a villain with the Normans. They sound like the villains. But then she uh, becomes a good guy, teams up with Adol. That sounds about right. No blue-haired goddess in sight. I wonder what's up with that. But similar to Memories of Salsetta, I mean, Karna, she had like reddish blonde hair. We got another blondie. We had Laxia, she's, she had blonde hair. The blondies always uh, have a prominent role in the East series as well. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments down below. If you're playing East 10 Nordics, if you played any other East games. I love the East series. I've enjoyed pretty much every game I've played with the exception of East 7. Not a fan of East 7, I'm definitely my least favorite, but East Origin, East 6, Othenthal Ghana, East 8, they're all near the top, absolutely. I love E6. People say, oh, E6 sucks. No, E6 is one of the best. You get the, the legend, Geis, and not Arios, Ernest, the original Arios McLean. So I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Everybody have a great day and peace out. 99.